Thank you for watching Times News and you're with me, Chawes Banda. First, the headlines. President Lazarus Chapera talks tough against norms that continue fueling that continue fueling violence against children in Africa. High hopes as Malawi participates in World Expo Dubai 2020 and Domestic Investment Forum. In other news, lack of clean water still a challenge in Malawi 57 years after independence. Those are the headlines. Please stick around because we've got more and the details to this news. Now the news in details. President Lazarus Chakwera has complained about gaps in laws that are aimed at fighting violence against children. Chakwera said this when he addressed a virtual Pan-African conference on violence against children on Thursday in Lilongwe. Jameson Chauluka has fired this report, which is read by Eric Msikiti. Chakwera said although Malawi has made strides towards eradication of violence against children, there are still challenges that need to be addressed. He says some social norms and values continue fearing acts of violence against children. Chakwera has since called for more civic education to cultivate new behaviors and perceptions regarding the rights of children. In Malawi, violence against children is widespread. For example, reports indicate one in every five girls are sexually abused before they turn 18 and nearly two out of every three boys suffer physical abuse during their childhood. There are hopes that the World Expo Dubai 2020 and the Domestic Investment Forum could unlock new markets for Malawi. Malawi is expected to participate in the World Expo to be held at Jebel Ali in the United Arab Emirates from October this year to March 2022. Tonga Sabola reports from Lilongwe. Trade Minister Sosten Gwengwe said the World Expo Dubai 2020 offers an opportunity for Malawian companies to establish market linkages with buyers across the world including those in the Middle East and the Gulf regions, which offer great buying potential. Kwengwe said in addition, the Expo provides an opportunity for Malawian companies to interact with potential investors, joint venture partners, and some leading international financiers of projects. This is really a world Expo where 192 countries are participating. So. We want our private sector to have a chance of showcasing uh, how ready they are to participate in the global value chain. Uh, but also it gives us a chance to be able to showcase what Malawi is really all about. It's a very peaceful country with a very competent and uh, independent judicial system. And uh, we would want people world over to be able to see the gem that Malawi is so that uh, they can uh, invest in this country and uh, be able uh, to sleep knowing that their investment is safe and secure. Malawi Investment and Trade Center Board Chairperson Kao Chokoto said the organizers of the event are taking care of many costs, including transport and accommodation, adding that the MITC would only spend about $14,000 for exhibiting the event on the Expo's online platform. The organizers are covering most of the cost. Um, the small cost that we had to, to cover, uh, that covers uh, the platform costs and so on, is about $14,000 for the Dubai Expo. Um, for the Domestic Investment Forum, we're talking about $8,000. The Dubai Expo was originally scheduled to run from October 20 last year to April 10 this year, but was shifted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Malawi Police Service has condemned hostilities towards some of its officers on duty enforcing COVID preventive measures. National Police Spokesperson James Kadadzera was reacting to an attack on officers enforcing the measures in Limbe Blantyre. He speaks to Times TV. As the Malawi Police Service, we are warning Malawians against acts of hostility and resistance towards their police in the course of enforcing COVID-19 preventive measures. We are saying that compliance is a must if we are to suppress the further spread of the disease in our communities. So as police, we will continue enforcing these rules and regulations through Operation Vala Mask, and that all those found on the wrong side of the law will be arrested and prosecuted. 
Meanwhile, police officers have been encouraged to do more in enforcing the measures. A leaked communication within the police says poli some police officers or some police stations have slackened in enforcement of the measures. Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Madalitso Kazombo, says lack of clean water remains a key challenge in Malawi. Kazombo said this during a meeting between chairpersons of various committees of parliament with a company called Pump Aid Beyond Water. The company seeks to improve water and sanitation challenges in the country. Matthews Kasanda has the details. Kazombo has held Pump Aid Beyond Water for coming to partner lawmakers to ensure that the shortage of clean and potable water is addressed. One of the key challenges that Malawians are facing, the people that we do present is water. Be it in urban locations, be it in the remote rural places, everywhere you go, the people say, uh, MP, we need water. So Pump Aid, Beyond Water, want to partner with Parliament to support various constituencies to ensure that our people have good clean and potable water. So we are very delighted and look forward to working this partnership. Pump Aid Beyond Water Country Director Elias Chimulambe says the partnership will have economic impact on Malawians. Uh, the area mechanics that we are engaging, they are they, aiming something within uh, the work of area mechanics. We also have other uh, entrepreneurs like water diggers. So this they when they dig a well they, they, they are paid. So if you can see it means they have income uh, which they support their families. Apart from that is actually the, the, the access to safe water supply within leach, within the household. Less than five percent of rural households have access to an improved water supply close to their homes, whereas only eleven percent of small scale farmers use irrigation, missing out on winter cropping. Communities around Nkudzi Bay in Magochi have voiced support towards a project which aims at extending water supply in the area. A non-government organization, Lake Shepherd, had warned that the project by Southern Region Water Board poses a threat to the environment. But communities in that area say there are more benefits than losses to this particular project. Justin Mkweu has the details. The debate was part of consultations by the board to complement a revised environment and social impact assessment report before the project commences. The project faced resistance from some quarters around Kudzi Mountain who said it poses a threat to a world heritage site at the mountain while communities around the mountain said the advantage of having water in the area far surpasses the threat the project poses to the heritage site. Speaking angrily during the consultations, a member of Lake Shepherd, Reza Sakrain, said they were not against the project, just that having a water tank at the mountain threatens the legacy of the site, which he said was rich in history. Reacting to the sentiments, Deputy Director in the Department of Museums and Monuments, Port Fakaliba, said a heritage impact assessment has been done and has identified spots of history. He said measures would be put in place so that they are protected. Adding his voice, a group village headman Manyama said the organization was fighting its own battles. His sentiments were echoed by Mangochi Central constituency lawmaker Victoria Kingston, who said people in her area needed the water as early as yesterday. There is no way we can protect species of fish, letting people, letting Malawians suffer of potable water. So my stand is, Perhaps we should transfer the fish species to another site of the lake. The lake is so long, it's not mangoes alone, it's not cruise alone, where there will be the intake of the water. So we transfer the species. What I'm looking for is safe potable water for the people of Mangoch. SRWB board chairperson Ibrahim Matola said it was clear from the discussions they had that people understand that the heritage site will be protected while their water supply needs are being met. It's a good platform and an opportunity and an eye-opener for us as Southern Region Water Board to hear from the beneficiaries of this project that they really need water as yesterday. However, I would like to thank the management for organizing such a platform in order to hear the views so that can be included 
in the report. The preliminary report and the project really shows that Malawi needs to be developing. The consultations continue today and tomorrow before the revised report is submitted to the Malawi Environmental Policy Authority, MEPA, for the way forward on the project. Some schools in Lilongwe have complained about inadequate assistance from the district health office to fight against the COVID pandemic. Times understands that some schools are yet to be disinfected or have tests conducted despite reporting cases among teachers and learners. Ellen Pindani has more in this report, read by. A teacher at Chimutu Community Day Secondary School who did not want to be mentioned told Times on Tuesday that after noting that two teachers and one student at the school had tested positive for COVID-19, they called the DHO to conduct massive testing because the situation created panic at the school. Director for Health Services for Longwe, Dr. Anafi Mbewe, admitted on Thursday that her office received communication from Chimoto CDSS about the situation. Mbewe said they failed to respond to the situation because of shortage of personnel and testing kits for COVID-19. The Director of Health Services said her office cannot manage to conduct massive tests in all the schools that have registered one or two cases of COVID-19. Meanwhile, Teachers Union of Malawi President Willie Malimba says the union will complain to the Malawi Congress of Trade Unions on the government's negligence to provide the teachers with personal protective equipment. But we need a direction from the government. That's why we have decided that we should observe this week. If there will be an increase as it is being, uh, being done this, this week, uh, by next week I think we are going to write it to Malay Congress of Trade Union as a mother body so that they should engage the government, that the government should give direction on this situation. On Wednesday this week, 26 people in the country died of COVID-19. Commission of Police, Elobi Mbanda, has called on officers to specifically ensure that the rights of the vulnerable populations are promoted and protected. Banda made the call during a one-day Southwest Regional Executive Committee meeting. Thomas Kacheri has the details. Commissioner wa mchigao chaku mwera chaku mazulo a Elobi Mbanda anati apolisi alindu udindo ozindigiri santu za Commissioner for the Southwest Region, Elobi Mbanda, said officers have the task of sensitizing the general public on the need to respect the laws. Banda added that there are more vulnerable people, like children, the elderly, and persons with albinism who need their protection. The government of Malawi is at minimum prices of farm produce like maize, soya beans, and the like. It is our mandate as, as, as the security agents that will help enforce the law that the traders are buying these farm produce at the recommended government set price or above that, not below that. Whosoever is violating that, then the law will take its course. Further, looking at the situation which we are globally we are faced with the COVID-19 pandemic, I was so urging the officers that there are rules and regulations. We need to take a leading role to enforce these preventive measures so that the pandemic can be contained. Secretary for the Region Executive Committee, Sandra Ricks, said the meeting was vital for the service. Well, this meeting is very important because it's where we meet and we discuss and we see forward to for better security of Malawi. They have been the citizens of Malawi. Definitely we need, we need to meet. Attended by various officers, the meeting was looking at how the police in the region has fared in crime reduction in the past six months and mapping the way forward. You're watching the news here on Times Television. We'll be back shortly after this break. <laughs> Every mom, you want the best for your child. Happy birthday. You feed her mind. 
and nurture her body. And you understand there are times you have to let her pick herself up when she falls. You make sure she knows the joy of sharing happy moments with family. And when everything comes together, you above all others will share the taste of success with her. Blue Band tastes like mama's love. Muntu mozi paika, sanga mange mozi. Koma antu angapo, kubwera pa mozi, timati uu nde mozi. Pa mozi, tilindi kutekera kubwera sa jitu kuko mdela lato. Network yatu ya atu ya jimalawi, ya TNM, ya kalai kutandiza madela ambidi, mungira zosia na siyana. Koma no panu, TNM, ikufuna kupiti tiza nchidoi, mongwiri za nandife eni ake ya mozi. Dinkani ya bwireta, TNM mudzi watu muka kwitsa nchito TNM poimba foni kutumiza ma SMS kugwitsa nchito internet kapena kugwitsa nchito mbamba chaka chiri Jones TNM idzipereka 1% kapena 1 kwaja pa 100 kwaja iri yonse ya ndalama zomwe yapanga kuti thandizire pa chitukuko chomwe anthu akufuna mdela lao tikabwera pa mudzi ndi kugwitsa na chimudzi tikonza kupanga zazikulu mudzi watu TNM mudzi watu Umozi umozi, unamanga ntolo. Ndondo meko, zita tatidwa. Welcome back to the news. The 192,000 AstraZeneca COVID doses arrived in the country on Saturday. Secretary for Health Charles Mansambo has confirmed. The consignment is expected to arrive through Kamuzu International Airport in Lilongwe. First on Malekezo has the report. Initially, the doses which are coming in as a donation were supposed to arrive in the country on July 15, but failed due to logistical challenges. According to Dr. Charles Mansambo, target of these 192,000 doses are those who received the first dose. He said those who have not received any should not get worried as the country is yet to receive another consignment of Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine. This means those that have not received any job are right candidates for the J&J, which according to Mansambo, only one dose will be administered. At least 302,400 doses of Johnson & Johnson are expected to arrive within the next two weeks. According to the ministry, other doses of AstraZeneca amounting to 119,200 will come before the end of July. Other consignments of vaccine include a package of 360,000 doses of AstraZeneca arriving end August and early September and 372,000 doses of Pfizer vaccine arriving before end September. Earlier, National Organization of Nurses and Midwives of Malawi President Charles Meza said delays in bringing the vaccines into the country has an effect on their efficacy and would likely create a scramble for those vaccines. Meanwhile, Ministry of Health has called for investigations into fraudulent acts where some Malawians are being deceived that they have received money through COVID money. Secretary for Health Charles Mansambo has since warned Malawians to be on alert. Matthews Cassandra has the details. The Ministry of Health has emphasized that it is not giving any COVID-19 monetary support to the public through any means, including mobile platforms. Mansambo says the Ministry has noted that fraudsters are sending text messages to people informing them that they have received COVID-19 money from the Ministry of Health. The fraudsters give people phone numbers to call and claim their money. The Secretary for Health has, however, emphasized that there is no such arrangement, stressing that any person who receives such messages should be reporting to the police. Adrian Chikumbe is the Minister of Health spokesperson. We issued that notice um, to distance ourselves from uh, whoever is doing that and to let the public know that if that, data, that, that message is not coming from the Minister of Health um, because we know there's been a lot of misinformation and uh, we wouldn't want to, to be part of it. Almost every day, some people in the country receive messages and calls claiming that the receiver has been sent money 
but there is a need for processing fee for them to get the cash. The fraudsters managed to steal from unsuspecting people who send money as a processing fee, but they end up being duped. SOS Children's Village says more investments into primary education could help Malawi achieve quality education by 2063. Programs Director George Kondowe says government and other stakeholders should ensure that schools have proper and adequate teaching and learning materials. Josephine Chipofia has more in this report, read by Sam Kalimira. Kondowe was speaking at Kayombo Full Primary School when SOS Children's Village handed over 250 desks worth 12 million kwacha to five schools within Choma community in Mzimba North. However, Kondowe said this can only be achieved if government works with different partners in ensuring that teaching and learning materials are available in all primary schools. The vision that we have for 2063 and indeed for the SDGs, it means that we are unlikely to meet those, those particular goals as a country if we don't invest in basic education. Because the investment in basic education means that we are preparing that child, that learner, to go to a secondary school and then to go to a university and become a productive citizen. And that's how we can achieve these goals. But the situation as it is, if we don't take decisive action, not only for Choma but across the country, it means we are unlikely to meet those goals. And that's something that we want to avoid. Mzimba North Coordinating Primary School Advisor John Zovu said challenges of desks are so common and held SOS for the support. Every learner, even adult people, to upgrade themselves to attain the highest academic qualification. Hence, we shall move forward and achieve the 2023 agenda. And the coming in of the donated test now, these we help learners and everybody to have positive attitude towards learning. One of the local leaders, village headman Chikwende Javula, also agreed with Zovu but quickly appealed to other well wishers to come in and help the schools with other learning and teaching materials. Schools that have benefited from the donation are Kayombo, Choma, Bingavura, Kaswiti, and Choma Community Day Secondary School in Mzimba District. That's the news for now, but before we go, a recap of the headlines. President Lazarus Chakwera talks tough against norms that continue fueling violence against children in Africa. High hopes as Malawi participates in World Expo Dubai 2020 and Domestic Investment Forum. In other news, lack of clean water still a challenge in Malawi. 57 years after independence. Remember, you can get more on these and other stories by visiting our website www.times.mw, liking our Facebook page Times360 Malawi and following us on Twitter at Times360 Malawi. Remember to wash your hands regularly, observe social and physical distance and mask up. Please stay safe. You have been with me, Jawes Banda. Goodbye.